All right, I'm going to do my own version of of Halloween review. Not a reaction because I've seen it already. Um, I'm not one of those fans that's gonna sit there and talk and do a reaction. This is Halloween. This is, you don't sit there and talk through it. You sit there and enjoy it. So I have already seen it, and for me it was great. And I'll explain why they're in the process. Now, I could edit and stuff like that, but I hate editing stuff. It gets very irritating. So, I'm going to sit there and pause and fast forward. So, that's my version of editing. But the main parts I'm going to talk about is parts that I enjoy. Parts that people will complain about, but uh, those are the complainers out there that take it their way. They're little five-year-olds complaining about everything. So, let's go through it. The beginning starts differently than... I would ever expect. I expected that him coming out of the fire, come out of the house. Did it happen? No, it happened like later in the movie, like twenty minutes after it started. So that was shocking to me. The beginning started great. Literally, the beginning started great. Um, let's get, let's get to it. Uh, this is where he finds the uh, sheriff guy on the ground, but that's not the part I'm talking about. This part I'm talking about the the. the they started with a flashback, straight up, almost. About the sheriff when he was young. How he encountered Michael. Um, it's pretty cool. Um, I like flashbacks in certain ones. If it has meaning and if it's done correctly. This was done correctly. Was it done too much? Eh, it depends on you. Um... It just depends on you at the end of the day, if if you think it was too much. Jokes are here in a movie and all that. Just yeah. any movie. There's going to be jokes. There's going to be stuff like that. So, the Lonnie kid making fun of, eh, that's just normal Halloween stuff. Brand new version, they had to make a, a kick to it. Um, Sheriff warning him, warning him to go home. There's colored loose. So, yeah. Uh, now they're gonna, um, he gonna end up running into Michael. Which is kinda, kinda cool in a way, but. <sighs> right here, right there. Um, uh, the mask, it's okay for what it was. It's not like the best Michael Meyer mask of an old one. I think they could have done better. But, I get it. Maybe they just didn't want to do it exactly. The original one. But, it was close to the original as possible. Not as possible. But, it's close enough. This Lonnie incident, it's cool. I'm not saying it's not. But, I mean, in my theory, in my opinion, Lonnie could have done better. Later in the movie. But, whatever. Now they're at the Meyer house. Oh, this is flashback. This is the first few minutes of the movie. It's just nothing but flashbacks. And like I said, some people may not in enjoy it. I like how they brought the dog back. The dead dog. They actually show the body now. Um. So yeah, that was kind of cool. These, this is the this is your typical dumb cop, smart cop, rookie cops that don't know what they're doing. It's pretty funny, like. Now this part here, where he's sitting in front of his daughter's, uh, Michael's sister's window, and he finds the footstep, like, you know, deep down, he was just standing there. Secondly, you know where he's at already. Just, just common sense, just logical of the room, how it was laid out, just makes you feel like, why are you still standing there? Why didn't you run and call for help immediately? But, he doesn't. It's just like, uh, it is what it is. Haddonfield. Where nothing exciting ever <laughs> Like, why is he talking like that? I, I don't understand. But whatever, it's cool. It's, it gives you a nice, a nice laugh. Because he gets, he gets what he's asked for. And then his partner asks for him for help. He's, he's too scared. He's like, he's terrified. He's a young kid. Coming up to a mass killer. 
So what he ends up doing, he's shooting, he, he has the opportunity to shoot Michael in the head. If he's a cop, he should have some kind of aim. But he shoots his partner right in the throat, and he dies. Of course, the cop covers it up, and all that. And he can't shoot him down the stairs, I'm that because he's, he, he's in shock. So, next part is Loomis comes out. Um, I don't know how they did this. I haven't figured it out yet, but it's pretty cool. I wish it would have done a better voice of it, honestly. I mean, it's awesome. Loomis is right there. But the voice is way off. But I like how they did this part. It's cool and all that. It's just the voice is completely off. I would have been okay if they would have dubbed it the old movies and cut and pasted him talking. I would have been okay with that. Or someone who talked over this guy. I would have been okay with that. But the spinach image, perfect. I'm happy with that. Uh, brought him back, I'm okay with that either. I'm okay with that. Um, yeah. Other than that, it's... Now they go back into the, uh, this Halloween... This movie night, they start off bringing out the the the, the uh, brand new characters of the movie. Uh, they're drinking at the bar, blah blah blah. This. They they introduce one each um, each other. They start to meet. Uh, meet. They start to get a feel of the old characters, what they went through. They they kind of. Uh, Tommy tells a story about the shape, how he encountered them, how he changed his life in their lives in town. How he's not gonna run from them anymore. How he's gonna face his fears. So, and now the best part is where the Halloween will trailer started with the uh, burning of the house. Um, a lot of firefighters get there. I didn't realize it was, was going to be that many firefighters. I think it was over 11 or 10 firefighters. Uh, never going to make it, but yeah, like I said. Um, and you might think like, well, these firefighters, they're made to handle a fire. They're not made to handle a serial killer. Um. And the ones that that pretty much went after him, I give them guts. They they kind of stood up, and yeah, the kills are graphical. What do you expect? It's Halloween kills. This movie is not about Laurie Strode one bit. Not one bit about Laurie. That's the next one. This is about Michael and what happens if you get it in in his way. That's pretty much what this is about. You get out of Michael's way, and you be all right. You get in his way. You're done. You're literally done for. Yes, this is a graphical movie. But it's it's a pretty much 90% about Michael Myers. Not about nothing else. The town. What. I'll, I'll get into that as we go on. Um, firefighter. The first one gets killed. Gets his face smashed up. And then this one um, asks for his help. Um, so... He pulls it in, but they don't show him killing him. You hear it, but they don't show it. This is the best scene ever I've seen in any movie in a long time. Him just walking out of the fire. That's just an incredible scene. I don't think it could be topped off ever on any movie. The aura of Michael just walking out of a burning house saying, come get some. Gets in his face like, okay, I'm not scared. I see how we are. I'm, I'm ready for y'all like this is just incredible like one of the best scenes ever and what well, I've ever seen of a heart walking by he's just trying to get home Michael is just trying to get home he doesn't care about Lori one bit he's just trying to make his way home but he just he just left the uh, burning house with his fingers blasted off he needed to get himself healed so this is the first house he encountered he gets in her house gets in a bathroom and take care of his uh, messed up hand um, a lot of people don't see that because they they just don't see it. This lady's having fun with the little plane. And that's cool. That's cool and all that. I like that. And, uh, fun characters, jokes. Like, a movie. you have to make it light. You have to make it light. They realize that someone's in the bathroom. Um, of course, the guy's going to go, like, say who it is. But, obviously, yeah, you, you just don't mess with Michael. Yeah, so, <laughs> a wine bottle. Uh, maybe if it was broken and you got him in his throat. So, he gets his head smashed up. Um, you know what happens to her in the trailer. You've seen it already. Um, 
So yeah, that's pretty cool. Uh, so we're back to this to get to, they finally bonded. They they have, have kind of respect for each other. Um, he calls Tommy that this is a uh, that's Tommy's son. Uh, it took me a second to realize that, but yeah. Um, so Tommy Doyle gets the phone call that his son's in trouble, and um, he's kind of mad. Uh, the the uh, fire the uh, sheriffs and all that the sheriff and the where the remaining cops get to the house finds the massacre, and uh, that's pretty much it. Uh, they announced on, on the TV that there was an incident. There was a uh, bus accident, but they didn't say who. They did not say who it was, so they didn't, they don't know what's going on yet. Um. Um. Tommy has a feeling who it is, but he he's not sure. So. So the uh, the nurse, the young little nurse there, female nurse on a Halloween outfit, goes in her car and finds someone in her car. Then she doesn't know who Michael is, and she saw on TV that there's a crazy lunatic on the way. She's assumed it's Michael, but it's not. It's one of those other patients that escaped from the bus. He was in the car, and so, as anybody knows, paranoia strikes. When paranoia strikes, it causes fear and out of controlness. And that's what happens throughout the movie. Innocent people dies and causes hate in the long run. So, yeah, uh, it shouldn't. Now, this is this movie. This this next part, you, you know how the movie goes from serious to comedy, serious to real comedy because it, you can't keep serious too much. You have to cause the relief. This next part is where they're at the Myers house already. And two gay people are living there. Um, this is a comedy. It's the next 15, 20 minutes is nothing but comedy. So I can't, I can't hate on that because you need to cut off just the suspense. You need to break it off. So the older man is downstairs making snacks and food. The other guy is upstairs getting high as a kind. Just wants to listen to music. And then he gets some trick-or-treaters lying about they ate a candy with an actual blade in it. And the other kid sneaks in the house and takes the whole candy. And then these old guys play a trick on him, try to scare him with the whole Makamaru um, story. That if they uh, if they go into Myers' house, they're going to die. And uh, the sheriff gets sick in the hospital. She sees the dead body. This is what I don't understand. She's sitting in front of the morgue, looking at ne dead, naked bodies. I don't get it. I get it that she's shocked there's so many dead bodies, maybe, but there's this naked body right in front of you, and you're just like, you know, and this guy is not even questioning her, like, what are you staring at a new body for? And so the next few minutes, they, b both, both of the m mother and granddaughter get a uh, question about what happened, how things happened, stuff like that. And then they find out that Michael is, is alive here. That they're in shock. They couldn't believe that he's alive. Um, he comes, this guy comes and tells them that they that they want to go after him. They want to end it. That they're sick and tired of running. Uh, the mother tells the daughter, you, you're crazy. You don't, you don't know what you're doing. You're just, you're just a child. Which, the mother's doing the right thing. She's taking her and her, her daughter. And she's right. You can't go against Michael. So she knows what she's talking about. And she, she listens to her for now, but she listens to her. Um, but um, it just gets out of control. Lori is fine. Daughter leaves a nice with with Lori, and she she sneaks out of the hospital. Tommy is just slowly uh, trying to form a mob um, with guns and all that. None of them have shotguns. Most of the, most of them. Um, so they go around, he goes around town, tell him, hey, be, keep, keep an eye, keep an eye out, uh, form a group, he tells all, all these people to start getting, gathering together. This is a scene where we saw in the trailer that these kids are playing on the swing set after eating candy, and Michael's in the background, 
Um, so we, we've seen this part already throughout the trailer. So he kills him one at a time. Um, the uh, nurse was a quick kill. Uh, the the big dude he was trying to chuck Michael, but he just like, are you serious? Like he just couldn't believe. Like are you serious trying to chuck me out? And he gets her, and he, he gets him easily. Uh, little Lindsay, um, she's smart. She emptied out the candy, put bricks in it, and beats him with with bricks for a little bit. But of course, you know how that doesn't work for a long time. <laughs> you know how that doesn't work out for a long time. So, so she ends up getting loose because she's trying to take off the mask, and she ends up escaping a little bit. She runs down down the creek, hides in the bushes, but her breath is like seriously out of control. She couldn't um, she can't calm it down too much. So she. He's trying to find her. He's like literally steps away. Like he's right there. She's right here. But she can't calm, calm her breath. She's seriously like hyperbolic. Um, like trying to freak out. But she's trying to control herself. But she can't. She just can't. I don't know if Michael's distracted because of the uh, the water. And, pl and plus of his breathing. You can hear him breathing hard. So maybe his sound and the water is... Confusing him because her he can hide he can he can kind of hear her, but he can't fully hear her. So she stays there for a little bit. Um, she ends up going like he, he ends up going across the bridge, and she ends she she ends up like completely covered in mud and all that. She survives, but she like barely survives, and that's just pure dumb luck, like severely dumb luck that she survived. So, uh, Tommy and them, they're, they're, they're drawn around, um, he's, he's telling her stories about her dad, how he was funny and all that, um, they found the car, they found the dead bodies, um, Lori and Cheryl were having a little story when, um, then Lori likes the sheriff, and, um, they did kiss at one time, but, that's it. It was just a kiss and didn't go any further. She wanted it, I guess, in a way, but she was too scared or had other things in her mind. They get they get Lindsay out of the ditch, creek stream, whatever you want to call it. Um, so they're back at the hospital. She gets she gets into care. At this time, Tommy's is informing the whole hospital what's going on. That the it's a crazy killer that 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 they need to organize up and the sheriff is telling them to calm down but obviously one sheriff and fifty people and the sheriff ain't gonna have no say in it one bit. Paranoia kicks in hard here. That's what happens. You equate a you equate uh a mob. You can't control the mob. It's all paranoid. You just completely paranoid. Uh, Lori now find out that he's alive. She just like completely angry. She puts a painkiller in her, in, in her, and we're back to the gay house because we just had an intense scene. We need some comedy. Uh, Michael knocks on the back door, then he knocks on the front door, and then he tells the other guy go back and check the door. Obviously. You know what was gonna happen. He goes back. The back door is open. Um, he tells his uh, partner, "A, hey, someone's in the house, and it's not a kid, because there's blood on there's blood on the back door." So he starts taking off his jewelry for some reason, which I don't get. Like, is he more faster without jewelry? <laughs> Whatever. Like, he takes off everything and he picks up a little bitty knife from the table. He picks up a big butcher knife, which I give him credit, um, but then we go back to the scene with the hospital because you had to go from c comedy to stressful scene. Um, so they go around from the house to house or room to room to house, to house room, room to room, try to find the person that's in their house. And the way that Michael kills the the younger dude 
the younger guy it's graphical um a knife on the side and gudges his eyes out that's just like pretty pretty brutal um and the thing is he stands he walks in and he stands in front of um michael's window michael's right there at the window sitting behind him and he just tells him michael you're, you're his home like and and Michael walks up and kills him, and he doesn't do nothing to defend him. Like he just like kills him. Like, so what's it? What happened in the night for? Why don't you just run out of there? But whatever. So we're back at the hospital. The other patient that escaped from the bus that night on the, on the original on the first one, um, the one that actually took the car in the beginning of the movie, um, gets to the hospital, asks for help. Well. People are paranoid and they think that's Michael because they, they never seen him. They don't know what it looks like, so they assume that's him. So they're chasing him down throughout the whole hospital. Chasing him down. Only Karen realized later that it's not him. And she, once she realized that, she's trying to tell them to calm down and stop. But you can't control a, a mom. You just can't control a crazy mom. You create a paranoia. This is what you get. Um... Lori gets her, her, her stitches get opened up, and, um, so, the guy gets trapped upstairs, we do another flash scene where Michael gets captured, or the sheriff had the opportunity to kill him, um, but his compassion of a human being saved Michael, Loomis wanted to kill him, Loomis wanted to put a bullet in his head, but the sheriff stopped Loomis from doing it. Because he was being compassion. He was being a human being. So Lori doesn't have no hate for him. Because he was doing a directly human thing. So Lori doesn't hate him. He just understands that he made a mistake. So we go back to the, ho to the hospital scene. With the patient. She, she um, locks him up in a, in a little hallway. With both doors. But the the uh, the mob breaks down the doors. Piece by piece with the, with the with stuff. And the dude jumps out the window. And he pretty much has a broken head and a broken skull all over the ground, concrete and everything. But that's what you get with a crazy mom. When you create a witch mom, that's what you get. So, um, yeah. And then on, on, they keep going flashbacks. Like I said, this movie has a lot of flashbacks. But you gotta realize, you have to do the flashbacks or break the scene tension. This is one way. So for this guy not to get in trouble by the law, this cop tells him the lie about that he shot him. He says that his partner shot himself, trying to get free with Michael. So he takes his gun and puts takes the other partner's gun and switches guns out so they can keep the story straight. So he protects him. So that's him. Other than that, um, so we go back to the chase. That he, they know where he's going. He's going back home. Um, they get to this house. Uh, Lonnie goes in first. Within a few seconds, he's, they hear a gunshot, and that's it. Um, he they don't. <laughs> he's done. They they go. Uh, they go. They both go in looking for him. Um, Michael does a little thing in the, in the closet. There's a pumpkin. She shoots it with a shotgun. They go upstairs to find out their bodies. Um, Cameron gets attacked because he, he finds his dad in the attic door. Crush. Michael comes out of the closet, attacks him real quick. Um, she gets a good stab with Michael. Uh, I'm shocked about that. But Michael just takes it in. Literally just takes it in and just smashes her. Um, uh, this next part where uh, Cameron is being attacked by Michael. Um, I think he drugged it out too much. But he just like doesn't like really physically kill him in a heartbeat. Um, she falls down the stairs. She gets her leg twisted. And he, he's, he she's taunting Michael to come after her to, to, to kind of leave him alone. But... Michael's not Michael. You know Michael. He's right now hanging through the guard uh, the guardrail. 
Where is it? He's hanging through the little guardrail as he's coming down the stairs. So, as he gets to, as he gets past him, she thinks she that he's safe, that he he's gonna walk by her, walk by him and and, and have him live. No, he's seeking. He just grabs his neck and does a one eighty, just literally kills him instantly. Like I said, Michael enjoys what he does. He enjoys it, and this is what this movie is about: him enjoying for what he does. So next scene is where we saw in the trailer. She's Allison is on her knees. Michael's in there, but during this whole thing, she 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 wasn't looking at him directly. She realized that her mother came in the background. That's why she was taunting him at the end, and she was confident. So Karen comes in with an actual um one of the little hay forks, and she uh shoves it in Michael's back, right in his spine. Michael goes down. And he was going to get back up, but then Karen slammed on his neck with his foot. It sounded like it broke, but he's still breathing, so it wasn't like nothing like, nothing bad. So Karen takes off the mask and makes him chase him, chase him down, the, makes him chase down, down the alleyway and all that. And he does, because he cares about the mask. So the next few scenes is him chasing, him him walking around without a mask on. Does it bug me? No, not really. I didn't care if he had a mask removed or not. Did he show his face? To a degree, yes. But was it a big deal? Did he ruin the movie? No, no, it's not. This is where the mob finally gets to him because they she has a, a trap set up. Um, he gets a mask on because he realized he, they completely surrounded him completely completely surrounded the man and He knows what he's about to do. He knows what's about to go down So he says look well, he's gonna get the mask on he's, he's gonna go at it the way he wants to go at it with his mask on and him fighting and Yes, they they get they get advantage of him Does he get a little hit shots in there stabs here and there? Yes, he does it's Michael, of course he does. But it, the number games do get up to him. And this will show in the next movie he's nothing but a human being. Yes, he has supernatural power because how can he keep getting up, getting up, getting up, they're getting shot. They literally shot him five times here again. The guy just shot him with a gun over and over. He just got, stand, stand back up like nothing. But at the end, of the day, he's still human. He can only take so much punishment at one time. So after getting beat up so much, she's down on the ground, trying to recover. And as soon as they turn his back on him, he gets back up and gets does what he does best. Does what he does best. So at this point, Karen thinks that they won because they got him down on the ground. Um, so they're back at the house, they're back at the house, and, um, they're trying to, like, uh, they're getting cared about, but they, they don't know that he's gonna get, that he's, that, that he fought his back, he fought his way back up, and killed all of them, all of them, he killed all of them. So, she's at his house, looking at, um, looking at the, his bedroom sister's window, and in in her mind, she sees a little baby, uh, Michael. She's a little baby Michael. So she goes upstairs. There's fresh blood. She doesn't think about it too much, but she just goes upstairs. She she uh, yeah she dies. <laughs> she goes and stands in front of his window, which is weird. Which which is weird. Like she literally stands in front of his window. Like, maybe she wants to get a point of view through Michael. Like, I get it. But you, when you see a fresh blood, you shouldn't even say something like, hey, this ain't right. But, yeah, she dies. And that's how it ends. He, he ends up killing her. She thinks it's over, but... 
that's just that's just so so good. But yeah, um, he kills her, and that's about it. I mean, that's how it ends. He ends. She ends. She ends up dying, and Lori doesn't know yet. That's the cliffhanger. But she does say at the end of the day, Lori does say at the end of, at the end of the movie that if he if he's if they don't get him tonight, they'll wait to next year or the following year to get him. Because she knows she he only he only kills on Halloween. So she already says it at the end of the movie that if they don't get him tonight, which they don't, they're gonna wait uh until the following Halloween or the following after that one to get Michael. So they already laid out the uh, plot line, plot t time to a degree, but overall, that's what pretty much happened. Um, it's a good movie, yes, because it is about Michael, not about Lori, not about anything else. Just a, a first time ever, a point of view through Michael to a degree. Like you get in his way, you're gonna pay the price. The only reason why it was a lot of kills is because people crossed his path. If they didn't cross his path to get in his way, it wouldn't have been that many kills. But they cross his path. So, he's pretty much like, hey, you get in my way, you're going to pay the price. And that's it. Is it a good movie? Yes. It leaves you wanting more. It leaves you wanting more. I felt like this ending here was like towards the middle of the movie, but it wasn't, it wasn't in the movie. I wanted, I wanted more. Um, was a lot of killing? Not for me, but uh, was something graphical? Not really, just intense. If you've seen Saw movies and other movies like that, they're more graphical than this. Saw movies are completely over the top. This is not, this is just plain melee killing, straight up. Knife, stabbing, anything like that. But other than that, it's not that bad as people were making it out to be. Uh, do I recommend it for some people? No, I don't recommend it for some people. Only true fans should watch this movie. True Halloween fans. If you're not a true Halloween fan, don't watch it. It's just not for you. Uh, if you're a Halloween fan, you're gonna love this movie. Hundred percent, you're hundred percent going to love the movie. Um, some parts you're not gonna like. They can't make this movie for everybody. They just can't. You're gonna, you're gonna have your good points and your bad points. So, so overall, this is my little two cents of it. I. Thoroughly enjoyed it. I've seen it twice already. Um, and I am going to see it at the theater tonight. After I've ever seen it, I'm going to see it at the theater. So, um, other than that, I severely recommend watching it. Uh, there's nothing bad about it out there today. I don't see nothing that was too bad. Um, Oh yeah, I mean it was a good movie overall. It was a great movie. Uh, they're gonna try to explain the aura of Michael, but on the next on the on the next movie, so it'd be interesting to find out how they're gonna do that. Are they gonna go through the supernatural too much, or are they gonna do it when she's possessed by a demon? We don't know yet. They're going into that. Steps have been laid. In this movie that they're going into the supernatural realm so we'll see what's going what's going to happen so that's my two cents of this movie i enjoyed it like a true halloween fan i am i enjoyed this movie so hope you guys enjoy it who who are true halloween fanatics so until next year for halloween ends and hope there'll be more halloweens like this um, I can't wait for next year's Halloween. Until then.